Welcome to the Whole Athlete Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you become a fat burner, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey guys, it's Debbie Potts, the host of the Whole Athlete Podcast here in Kona for Ironman Hawaii World Championship coming up here in four days. And today is Tuesday. The race expo opens up. The Parade of Nations is tonight and everything starts getting crazy. Tomorrow we have our low car athlete seminar with Paul Larson and we've got Simon Ward and Matt Bach from UCAN talking and myself, the host, and I'm going to talk about how chronic stress impacts the whole you, including your ability to burn fat, optimize health and improve performance. So as you know, as a frequent listener to the podcast, since we started 2011 with Fit Fat Fast podcast, we always talked about burning fat eating fat to burn fat, eating fat to fuel your exercise and metabolic efficiency, metabolic flexibility. And now finally, so many years later, it is a hot topic. So we've got about 50 people signed up for the Low Carb Athletes Meetup Seminar tomorrow to teach you how to be fat adapted. Paul Larson will talk about the science behind training hit science that he's done lots of research with Dr. Dan Plews and Maffetone and talking about fit and over fat and unhealthy or can you train to be fit and healthy. I will talk about a metabolic chaos as we do in FDM practitioner work that chronic stress is going to impact your blood sugar levels. It will impact your gut biome, your immune system, your hormone balance, your food sensitivity, gut biome, memory, brain fog, pretty much everything. So how do you train for an Ironman and not get broken and burned out? That's the big million dollar question. So we're going to talk about that and I'm going to touch on the holistic method, how we, me, Debbie Potts Coaching, works with coaching athletes from a health perspective now, not necessarily focusing on riding your swim, bike, run workouts and strength training, but I'm focusing on healing and building the whole athlete from the inside out, working on your nutrition, low carb, high fat, figuring out the right ratios for you to balance your blood sugar, measuring with Keto Mojo, having your ketones measured to make sure you are metabolizing fat, as ketones are a byproduct that will give you good brain fuel and energy. And then working on the exercise that you're not overtraining and under recovery. So doing the Maffetone type of training, 180 minus your age, majority of your workouts. And then when appropriate, we add some interval training while we avoid that black hole training where I see everyone running along the Leahy Drive this week seems to be just working at that nowhere, man heart rate range that they're just not doing high heart rate, low heart rate intervals, and they're not doing low heart rate. They're just doing tempo work, which I don't know. We'll ask Paul Larson his viewpoint on that. Should you be training that high heart rate nonstop if that's what you're doing race day, but it's an Ironman and it's hot out. So should you be training by your race pace goal heart rate or what should we do? So I'll get the kind of the research, the science behind it because he specializes in that. Then I'm going to dive into the importance of sleep as well as how to manage your stress, doing lab testing to identify those hidden stressors that impact your hormone balance, immune function, detoxification, your digestive function, and that's going to impact your energy systems, your mitochondria, and your nervous system, those neurotransmitters. So everything is impacted with chronic stress and that chronic stress can be from accumulation of stressors that overload your beaker of stress and that could be from chronic exercise, chronic stress at work, financial stress, life stress, family stress, sugar, vegetable oils, excess exposure to toxins, environmental chemicals, all of that accumulates into that beaker of stress so your brain doesn't know 
good or bad stress. It just knows too much and it goes through that filter and it impacts the HPA axis. So that's what I'm talking about. I will be doing a free webinar that I'll be promoting here at Ironman if I go hand out brochures. I was hate being that person, but I made a 500 postcard things to hand out to promote my low carb athlete seminar webinar on October 30th. It's on a Wednesday. And I will be doing a live webinar. I'm trying to do a webinar once a quarter coming up in the new year as we focus on healing and rebuilding the whole athlete from the inside out with the holistic method. Then, of course, we always need to dive into digestion, gut health, your gut biome, genetics. We need to talk about hydration, especially this week. I think a lot of people are outside all day getting dehydrated. It's really hot. And I see people work out in the morning when it's nice and cool. That's great. But that's not what you'll be doing on race day. So maybe going for a 30, 40 minute run when it's a little bit warmer out so you get acclimatized. But also you have to really hydrate more than what recommended is half your body weight ounces a day. But add in some Himalayan sea salt, electrolytes. We've got the Pure Vitamin Club gave me some salts to hand out, electrolytes. We've got real salt. Now, everything here just makes you so dehydrated. So adding more electrolytes to your water is key. You don't need the Big part of being in Hawaii and racing Ironman in Hawaii is how much you need to hydrate, not overhydrate. And then happiness, joy, playfulness, I think, is an essential part of our overall health. So we're going to talk about that. The seminar, I'll try to do a recording, Facebook Live or something, at least get the audio recording. So I need to get a microphone here from Lava Man Race Director Jerry Rott's going to help me out. And it's exciting. Lots going on. So I want to talk about how to train for an Ironman's low carb athlete with Paul Larson, but then we're going to talk about leading up to race, especially like this week, how do you train and recover and do your taper? And then fueling, we'll talk about with UCAN, Matt Bach, about how to fuel using UCAN, drink slow release fuel. So you, when you need little carbs and because your heart's gonna be up higher, you're gonna be burning a little more carbohydrates, you're not gonna be racing Ironman in hot weather and have your heart rate stay at 120 just goes up because it's so hot out and you'll be tired and then also adding those electrolytes as we go so Matt's going to talk about that hopefully we'll do a webinar with both those guys in the near future so let's go into my favorite topic right now is digestion and gut health and talking about what we're doing in my phase two of my 30 day program because I was just writing an email to them and pulling up some articles about lectins, phytates, and gluten. How there's a lot of good vegetables that you think are so healthy for us, but they're also with lectins and gluten and phytates that are anti nutrients and how they can irritate that gut wall lining, leading to leaky gut and inflammation and having little holes in our gut wall lining so things seep out of the gut that are not supposed to and then we get inflammation in the rest of the body we get more food sensitivities and we have all these miscellaneous symptoms that are related to gut health so when i'm coaching athletes in my 30-day program we work on starting with a phase one liver detox with intermittent fasting time restricted eating lots of bone broth and having one meal a day and then we work on phase two, 21 day digestive reset and repair and rebuild. And then we work towards phase three, which is maintenance. How do we do this for life and doing a five, two type of ratio that during the week we do a five day intermittent fasting, time restricted eating, low carb, high fat. So you bounce your blood sugar using keto mojo. And then it becomes intuitive nutrition, knowing what you need for your body to feel good full, satisfied, energized, and not having symptoms of poor digestion. And then doing this 80% of the time. So maybe it's five days during the week, you're good, you're on track, and then two days you're kind of off, maybe refeeding a little more carbohydrates, and those probably correlate with a higher exercise day if you're an endurance athlete, tend to ride long Saturdays, run long Sundays, so a little high carb 
you can probably burn off a little bit more if you're doing some intervals in the end of your long workout. So staying low heart rate burning fat, but maybe the last half hour or so of a long bike, long run, you add some tempo race pace. And then I like doing finish a little time trial to finish home and burn out those glycogen stores. So we'll go into that, my program and the webinar coming up October 30th. And I'll be running this group online coaching program almost every month, not December. We'll just do the five day detox beginning of December. And then January, we'll pick it back up in the 30 day program. I really think it's important for athletes, especially endurance athletes, when we're eating a lot of sugar in our past and you're adding a lot of stress in your life with the chronic extra cardio on top of a busy lifestyle, living life as a race, not a journey, that we need to be aware of our gut health. And it's really important to focus on eating good foods that don't irritate the gut and cause inflammation, but also focus on feeding your gut, your gut biome, and also looking at genetics as I talk about DNA fit. You can upload that raw data into your genetic profile that gives your nutrition, exercise, sleep, and stress genetics on there, detoxification, all sorts of different reports that you can get on DNA fit. Um, put this all together and work on your digestive rebuild and repair, or I guess repair and then rebuild be the right order and I've recommended to my coaching clients to do the mega spore biotic and then they have the phase two that you do the second month after taking mega spore biotic we work on a prebiotic that they sell it's a drink mix you have once a day and then the third month you start rebuilding the gut while lying with the mucosal repair drink mix that you can have so it's really important especially off season and after racing to work on healing and rebuilding the whole athlete from the inside out with the liver detox and digestive rebuild repair so that's what i'm doing that's what i'm speaking about that's what i'll be doing the webinar for and you know that repair rebuild and reset is really what you should be doing in the winter here not overly racing like I used to just run a marathon I just did Ironman Hawaii and then no oh, 50k trail run comes up February and then suddenly you never gave yourself time off so recovery is key so yesterday I had time to talk to Andy from Garmin and got him to speak a little bit at our low carb athlete fat adapted athlete seminar and I don't have the new Garmin I need to upgrade my Garmin but you can really learn on their YouTube videos how to use the recovery and kind of the HRV training evaluation on your Garmin. So I have all my clients that are doing my health coaching program test their heart rate variability, especially if they're working out a lot of high intensity interval training and more cardio, it's really important to check that you're recovered before you do your scheduled workout. So sometimes you need to adjust your schedule and maybe take it easy. But anyways, I just wanted to go into the low carb athlete first annual meetup that we had yesterday. And I'm excited that we had over 50 people registered on my event bright page for the meetup seminar and sadly only 18 showed up but it's all right it's Ironman Hawaii week I am excited that there's 50 out of 5,000 people here that were actually interested in the fat adaptation process for endurance athletes what also boggles my mind is that there's 4,500 people 550 do my math right that are still doing the high carb training and fueling and this is an endurance sport. I think it's a little different how many carbs you can tolerate, how your body needs when you're doing uh, obstacle course training, Spartan racing versus Ironman Hawaii <laughs> or Ironman. So um, we talked about recovery and pair at the finish of the workout, but I want to go into what Paul Lars is talking about. And it's what I've talked about for 10 years and what this podcast and my coaching program and 30-day group online program is all about. 
teaching you how to become a fat burner. I've said that for years and now I'm focusing my energy on to coaching people to do a fat adaptation process, how to flip that switch from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. And I think it's really important off season for athletes to start thinking outside of the box, thinking that, hmm, I have fat in my body to burn. I have 40,000 plus calories of stored fat energy to use, but how do I access that fat for fuel and stop using my backup carbohydrate fuel tank for my main energy source? So we need to change the fuel tanks. The fuel tank should be fat. Instead of the way we've been taught is eating the high carb, low fat, non-fat diet forever, and people are still doing that. It just teaches you to keep burning through those glycogen stores. Then you have a low sugar, you kind of bonk perhaps, low energy, and then you have to eat more sugar again to refuel that tank. So if, if your gas tank is only 2,000 calories, you're going to go through that pretty fast. And you're going to have to keep eating gels and sugar bomb drinks and keep restoring that glycogen store. While you're racing, it's kind of hard because your blood is not in your belly to digest food. It is in your extremities. So when you have all this sugar and your body's going, okay, I'm trying to swim, bike, and run and keep myself moving, but you're putting all this stuff in my body, well, the sugar doesn't often react well in people's body. And what happens? We have GI distress. We are throwing up and we're, or we're running to the porta potty and pooping. So it's really funny at our seminar last night, we had Dr. Uh, Paul Larson speak about the hit science and his research. He's very talented, knowledgeable, and well experienced in this area. And that's his specialty is working kind of the fit and healthy part of athletes heart rate variability testing has done articles lots of research with Dan Plews and Maffetone and Simon Ward talked a little bit as well I had him ask questions for Dr. Paul Larson and I spoke a little bit and then Andy at Garmin and Matt Bach from UCAN what's funny is that all of us that are trying to spread the message to be a low carb athlete, to be fat adapted and metabolically efficient, metabolically flexible, we all started thinking outside the box. We used to all train at a higher carb intake and do what we were told, what the magazines tell us, what most coaches tell you to do, and what the sponsors as Gatorade tell you to do. Power Bar, Goo, Cliff Bar is to consume carbohydrates. Well, all of us share the same story that we used to race and be throwing up the whole time. I threw up on the bike all the time when I first started Ironmans in 2001, and it took me until 2004 after trying all these different products, these Shake Mix, Infinite. I tried Hammer products. They're different shakes or drinks and all these different ones with all these calories in it per hour, and nothing worked for me until I started looking into more of the low carb athlete type of training when I started doing metabolic efficiency testing starting in 2005. Then I met Bob Seaborn and listened to him in 2008 or 2009. And then UCAN came out and you know I qualified for Ironman Hawaii starting in 2004 and I raced on and off until I was no longer able to race in 2013. So I did 15 Ironmans and qualified five times for Ironman Hawaii. Started my first one, Ironman Canada 2001. And it took me 2004, 2005, that's when I started qualifying and I skipped some years because I didn't feel like racing or I had an injury, had a shoulder injury and a foot injury. But I couldn't race those years. But point is, the same thing in my nutritional therapy practitioner world and my FDN practitioner world. When people are health practitioners, they have their same stories. They have, you know, chronic stress issues, adrenal fatigue symptoms, gut dysfunction. Same thing in these fat adapted athletes. We all have experienced something similar, which makes us share this 
similar mission, helping other athletes switch to becoming a fat burner and start to train the body, be metabolically efficient and metabolically flexible. So you are burning fat, but you can reach into those glycogen stores when needed and still switch back to being fat burner. So we're going to dive into this topic a lot this winter. So hopefully you're good with that. And I want to hear your questions and I want to hear your success stories. I'd love to do Friday's an episode with listeners, with other low carb athletes to share your switch that you made. What's your kind of moment that you realized, you know, this high carb way of fueling for endurance sports, does it make sense? And that I don't need all these sugar drinks and I don't need all these gels and bars. And I might take four weeks or might take six months for you to be fat adapted. But this is a time of year you wanna start learning how to become a fat burner. If you want to speed up the aging process and you want to have more inflammation in your body, more aches and pains and slower recovery time, more GI distress, leaky gut, gut problems are going to relate to brain fog, memory, clarity issues, then keep on the high carb diet. But if you really are curious about taking care of the whole you from the inside out, that's what the holistic method is about. That's what being able to burn fat and work on your mitochondria health so they're making that energy for you and they're not under stress and damaged and working on performance, but also longevity. We want to be looking amazing at 70 years old, not be crippled, hunched over, wrinkled, and having knee and hip problems. So that's kind of my review that I'll go into a little bit more next time from the show or the seminar last night. But Talk to Rich Soares about it on a podcast. We'll launch that for tomorrow. And then I really find it interesting watching all the racers here. So on a lead drive, I've been here about six miles long. And a lot of people, Ironman athletes, I can tell who they are because now they have their yellow race race slate on. They are doing a lot of hard workouts. And I want to go back and look at what I always did and what Mark Allen's schedule had me do, and what I would do for my own athletes, wouldn't be this, like, tempo 30, 45 minute, hour workouts they're doing. I would do, you know, low heart rate, and then do some interval workouts. Hard, recover, run hard, recover, some more pieces. This is training for Ironman. We're not doing a half Ironman or 10K race. This is 2.4 miles swim, in the ocean, it's a 112 mile bike ride in the heat and often side winds and headwinds, uphill and downhill. And then we've got a 26.2 mile run in a really hot weather with the pavement and the lava rocks and you go out to the energy lab, it's tough. And so your body needs to be fueled up properly, but it also needs to be rested and recovered and repaired ready to go on race day. So I don't really understand why all these people are just doing these hammer fests, overtraining the race week when you've already done what you needed to do. I would be spending a little more time off my feet and doing shorter workouts with more interval training and more rest days, like taking the races Saturday. So we used to take Tuesday, Thursday rest day, maybe just do easy swim, walking, some mobility work, and then do some brick workouts Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Do the long swim, I would do the race that they had here on Sunday, 2.4 mile race, swim race, and then do the longer run, maybe an hour and a half on the Saturday, and even that could be less, and then the Sunday do like a three hour bike ride, but all week long you see these people working out a lot, and it's interesting. So I would think, I went to talk to Paul Larson about this, his thoughts, what the science is, but my intuitive nutrition, or nutrition, my intuitive self on being an athlete and a coach would say, maffetone type of heart rates, shake it out kind of runs, or hard easy, hard easy intervals. That's one thought. I also understand that races need sponsors and they need to get money, but Gatorade's been around a long time and it's pretty funny to me how much Gatorade is advertised everywhere. There's also Goo, uh, Goo, Cliff Bar. Who else is here? 
you know, all those drinks. And they are supposed to be hydration drinks. They talk about Gatorade's ads for doing sweat lab, how much water, how you need to rehydrate because you lose so much fluid electrolytes through sweating. All right, I agree. That makes sense. But why don't we just have fluid drink? Maybe you have to flavor it for people, but water with electrolytes. Put some sea salt in it. Instead, all these companies are adding sugar in there. Well, if you're just doing a swim workout or doing an easy run, your heart rate's down. Why do you need sugar? It doesn't make any sense. So it's killing me this week. All these people having their sugar drinks all the time, which are to rehydrate. You don't need sugar to rehydrate. You need electrolytes, Himalayan sea salt, minerals. It's just right there in a Himalayan sea salt. Got Hawaiian sea salt. Just put it in your water. No sugar. And then I see people having their gel blocks. You just went for an easy swim. You're not burning sugar. You're burning fat unless you're a total carb addict and your metabolism is carb burner, which is hard to imagine how these so many athletes can be such carb engines when they're doing Ironman. And these people are lean and strong. So I would be more worried about what their insides look and how they're speeding up that aging process and the damage to their cells, that stickiness again, the cells from too much sugar called ages. So advanced glycation on their cells. It's like, I always think of it as a sticky jar say a jam jar and around the lid, it gets all sticky. That's what's happening to your cells when you have too much sugar. So that's a big observation around here. Lots of sugar intakes. I don't know why it's, I've been doing this for 10 years, doing the low carb, high fat, metabolic efficiency work. And it makes sense. I don't know why everyone else doesn't start thinking outside the box. So that's my soapbox. You know, you have 2,000 calories stored in the carb tank or you have 20,000 to 100,000 of stored fuel in the fat tank. So why don't people start thinking that? As they say, and Paul Larson was talking about the seminar, if you can't burn it, you store it. If you have insulin raised, it's used to store that fat to lower that blood sugar down. So my goal when I coach athletes and my health building clients, because that's my focus right now is coaching athletes as a health coach to help them heal and rebuild from chronic fatigue, burnout, and breakdown. And that's my focus is helping that endurance athlete. And part of that is, is using Keto Mojo and measuring their blood sugar fasted before a meal and two hours after a meal and see how that food's impacting your blood sugar. Ideally, it stays pretty stable throughout the day. It goes up a little bit, but comes back down. But instead, a lot of people are doing way too many carbohydrates still to this day, and they are just storing fat. Well, a lot of these athletes, I think here at Ironman Hawaii World Championship, they're not as fat as you see, no offense, regular races, a lot of overfat people because they're fit and healthy eating the wrong foods, probably training a little differently. These guys are top athletes in the world, so a lot of them look extremely lean, almost too lean, and pretty cut, but their workouts could be burning, depleting that carbohydrate storage. So if eating high carb diet, it may serve them well because they're training in that heart rate range there that burning barely any fat. So it might look good now, but that's the whole thing of performance and longevity. Do you want performance or longevity or do you want both? I want to have both. I want to be able to race Ironman Canada next year. You know, I'm not, I'm being realistic. I doubt I'll qualify for a mine in Hawaii. That'd be awesome if I did, but I haven't raced since 2012. I've been healing my body and rebuilding for many years, and I want to race and be smart. But my focus right now is more longevity. That's why I'm focusing my mitochondria, looking at my DNA fit reports, training my body appropriately based on my genetics and my health and my HRV, and I'm taking those supplements to help my digestion, help my gut health, help my blood sugar, help my adrenals. So there's a lot of supplements you have to take to be healthy. It's not just, oh, I don't want to take anything. I want to just eat from my food and get everything I need. Well, it's really hard to get all the nutrients you need. And we, as we get older and our stress and our foods are just not the same. So we do often need HCL supplement and digestive enzymes and some other assistance. Omega-3 is really important for people for anti-inflammation and we don't eat fish every day so adding that in a supplement too. I also have my clients do some liver detox herbal tea and antioxidant support glutathione and I have my clients 
right now in the program, I coach the online coaching program. We do a five-day liver detox, and then we work on 21-day digestive repair and rebuild. And then the third phase is maintenance, 8020 program. And part of the digestive repair is having some prebiotics and then helping rebuild that mucosal layer. So I have megaspore biotics, and they have a three-phase protocol I have people use if they have a lot of the symptoms of gut dysfunction, leaky gut. So going back to the seminar, we talked a lot about lessons learned from ourselves eating the high carb fuel plan, throwing up on our bike rides. Uh, it talks about having food on the green list at Tim Noak shares in his Real Meal Revolution, which I interviewed Tim Noak a couple times, five, ten years ago, and I have to pull that up, but the green food list is what he says that he, Paul Larson recommends for his client, but it is something I put on the Low Carb Athlete Facebook page, and I think it's probably similar to what I have my clients do. But I'm interested in who's going to be the low-carb athlete here. You know, who's racing a low-carb athlete using UCAN? So I have to talk to Matt Bach, the rep for UCAN, because I know Tim or Tim O'Donnell is doing low-carb. Dave Scott's doing low-carb. And I, was going to, I saw him at the VIP party last night. I was going to ask him if he's eating a bread with his sandwich burger, chicken things they had there. So I know he's doing it, but... The green list, Banting List Guide, Real Meal Revolution, it's on internet. And the green list, let me pull it up. Banting List Guide, what to eat. The gray list, what not to eat, but there's the green list is eat to hunger. Eat all these ingredients until satisfied during observation. And then they have restoration, transformation, and pre preservation. And then they have foods, the orange list, is self-control, and then they have a light red list, hardly ever eat, and then a banting red list, observation to never ever eat. So what do you think is on the green list? Hmm. Well, that is something we talk about in my 30-day program is you know, eating foods and paying attention to what you eat. And it's kind of a keto, low-carb diet you're teaching your body to burn fat and you can look at their green list and it comes on a form that you can do to download get the new keto food list on his website so i would try that my program find their program if you want to do it on your own the program i teach is 20 to 30 people 20 minimum and then we've got i mean 20 maximum 10 minimum because i help everyone every day so it's a little too much and more than 20 people and I'm going to do a men's group and a women's group because it's easier to separate the two because everyone's a little different. And it's about fasting, intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, and not eating before bed, two, three hours, work on getting sleep, exercising hard, and then strength training. I think a lot, a lot of people forget strength training, lifting heavier weights, and I think that's really essential. So... Learning how to become fat adapted is a process, and I'll share the links once I get the low carb athlete seminar we did. I, it was really loud because there's waves right behind us. So, in the microphone we had set up, they were missing a wire cable, so they could not hook it up. So, I will kind of talk to you guys and record what I was going to say because I didn't talk very much as I planned to because you couldn't hear anything. Uh, and then Dr. Dan Plews and Matt Bach from UCAN and Andy, Simon, and myself all shared some info. But I'll do a separate podcast on that. But check out The Real Meal Revolution and then check out YouTube under UCAN with Paul Larson. There's a great video link there. And what I do in my 30-day program is going to be in November is it's $597, which I think is very inexpensive because I... We have calls every Monday and Wednesday, and I text you or email each day, and we go through everything and reading assignments in my manual if you want to learn more. But it is kind of a keto carnivore. If you're not a meat eater, you're vegetarian, that's okay. It's that the main goal is to eat real food, 
that works for you and do a metabolic typing test. You can learn more what's best for you. But balancing your blood sugar, not having the spikes is the main goal. Letting your body digest your food properly is our other goal. That's what the fasting is going to help us with digestive reset, repair, and the liver detoxification. So if you want to learn more, find out more about Dr. Dan Plews, Paul Larson, Volick and Finney, Peter Defty, Peter Atia, and of course, Phil Maffetone have all been doing this for a long time. I've been talking about this since we started in 2011 with John Smith, and this has kind of changed the focus of this podcast to teach you how to be the low-carb athlete. So it's training the whole athlete from the inside out with the holistic method and to teach you how to burn fat, optimize health, and improve your performance longevity is the holistic method, the eight elements. So we have to work on nutrition, but you also have to work on how you eat, when you eat, what you eat. We have to work on exercising, not too much, not too little. So the Goldilocks effect for everything, finding the right amount for you. And sleep, of course, we work on seven to nine hours, getting to bed by 10, learning how to biohack your sleep so you sleep through the night. And then we work on, of course, stress, identifying those external stressors and hidden internal stressors. I'll start doing that in my individual coaching, ordering functional lab tests, which I'm, that's my FDM practitioner. I'll be doing five lab tests to start people out and solving their metabolic chaos. So being a health detective and investigating and what's going on with the whole you. And then we work on getting your mobility drills throughout the day. It's really important so you're not just exercising and sitting all day. It's really important to get your 10,000 steps a day and move more. And then, of course, digestion and gut health we work on in the 30-day program, the group program. And hydration, half your body weight in ounces more, plus more if you're having coffee or if you're in hot weather like it is here in Hawaii. And happiness, gratitude, taking a moment, watching the sunset each night, saying your prayers before you eat or going for a walk and just being silent and breathing the air and doing things that are healing, healing your soul, healing your spirit. Side note, I had Uber drivers last night going to the seminar because I had a suitcase filled with all my swag bags and they were all talking about healing and the magic power of the big island, Hawaii, Kona. And it was so weird because that's what I always feel here. The magic of Madame Pele and the healing power is very spiritual and being open to that and embracing it. So I shared an article on Facebook as well about that. It's like, what does that mean? Why is it calming healing? And why do you get kind of these energetic thoughts here? It's a great place if you're trying to make life decisions or you're trying to heal yourself or let go of something or start a new journey. So... I'm able to be here, spending all my money to be here and not making any money, but you know, sometimes you have to, money's not everything, and this is more important to take care of yourself, and you can't help other people unless you can take care of yourself first. So put that oxygen mask on first, that's what I'm doing. All right, enough of me talking to my computer screen by myself, talking in the air here. So let me know your questions. Let me know if you are a low-carb athlete, you have a success story you want to share, or maybe you just have questions that you want to come on the show for Friday. So I'll start booking those appointments out. And I use Zoom audio recording. You just need to be in a quiet space and have headset or microphone or just use your headphones so it's not any background noise. So let me know, debbieplatz.net's website. Follow me on Low Carb Athlete on Instagram or Facebook. All right, more updates tomorrow from Ironman Hawaii with Rich Soares. Aloha. Thanks for listening to The Whole Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at wholeathletepodcast.com. You can help us continue and grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and see you next time.